Did you know that the spiders are one of the animals that most people are scared of? There are millions of people who have arachnophobia, meaning that when they see a spider, they run away screaming. The majority of these arachnids of eight legs have six or eight eyes, and yet they have poor sight. Did you know that the silk that comes out of the spider's abdomen is much more resistant than steel wire of the same thickness? Well, it is, and it's a lot more elastic. Some say that if you were to use a spider's web with a thickness of a pencil, it could stop a plane in flight. That's incredible! Humans can use the spider's web for many different things, such as bulletproof jackets, threads of suture for stitching wounds, clothes, violin strings, or ropes used to hold a lot of weight, such as the one used by this mountaineer. Did you know that spiders use their webs to hunt, as well as to travel? The spider's web is very sticky, and when an insect lands on it, it gets stuck and can't escape. And the spider then makes the most of it to eat it up. They also use their web to make cocoons for their eggs and some to glide from one place to another with the help of the wind, just like Spider-Man. The truth is, spiders and the webs they make with their silk are one of the most fascinating facts we can learn from our nature, don't you think? Fun facts about nature. Which material created by nature is the most resistant? We could think that it's iron or steel, but it's not. According to some scientists, the most resistant material created by nature is a spider's web, which can be up to five times more resistant than steel, and it's also very elastic. Spiders use their web to capture prey and feed. But us humans also use it. We use spiders' webs, for example, to make bulletproof vests, suture threads to stitch up wounds, clothes, violin cords, or special ropes that handle many kilos like this escalator. Today we are going to learn about the invertebrate animals. You all know that the animals are divided into two big groups. The vertebrates that have an internal skeleton formed by bones and the invertebrates that have no bones. Vertebrates are oviparous, and we classify them in six big groups sponges, jellyfish, corals, worms, mollusks, echinoderms, and arthropods. Sponges are aquatic animals that are sac shaped and the body is full of pores. It is very easy to remember this group because many times we use them in the shower for our personal hygiene. Yes, many of the sponges we use in the shower are invertebrate animals. The 
jellyfish are invertebrate animals that live in the ocean. Their bodies are gelatinous and have tentacles. The truth is that when they appear in the beach, it is very annoying because their tentacles have small venomous stingers that produce very unpleasant bites. Corals are tiny marine animals that produce limestone residue, which give rise to beautiful shapes. Do you know this animal? Exactly, it's a worm. Worms are soft and long invertebrate animals that move by dragging their body in the ground because they have no feet. They can be aquatic or terrestrial. There are some worms that can be harmful and that is why we must be careful with them. Can you see this snail? Well, snails form part of the mollusk group. Mollusks have a soft body without legs and can also be aquatic or terrestrial. Some, like the snail, this clamp and muscles protect the body with shells. But there are other mollusks that don't have a shell to protect themselves like slugs or octopuses. The echinoderms are exclusively aquatic animals. Their bodies have calcareous plates that form a shell. Some echinoderms are balloon shaped and are covered in spikes that they use to defend themselves, like sea urchins. Others are star shaped and are, of course, called starfish. The arthropods are the most abundant animals on the earth. Of every 100 animals that exist, 80 are arthropods. These invertebrate animals have the body covered by an external skeleton called a cuticle. The most common way to classify the arthropods is by the number of legs they have. This way we can classify them in four big groups. Arthropods with six legs. In this group, insects like ants and flies are present arthropods with eight legs, where for example the arachnids like spiders and scorpions are. Arthropods with ten legs include the crustaceans like crabs and lobster. Arthropods with more than ten legs like the centipede that as you can see has much more than a hundred legs and are called myriapods. The arthropods are invertebrates, meaning they don't have internal skeletons. They are a vast amount of them, including this dancing crab, these dragonflies, this caterpillar, or even all these tiny ants. The arthropods are very different from each other. Or do you think this butterfly and this shrimp have a similarity? Truth is, they don't look alike at all. But yet all arthropods have common characteristics. Arthropod is a Latin word, which means atro, joints, and podos, feet or legs. The main arthropod characteristic refers to what their name suggests. They all have jointed legs. Another fascinating characteristic that they all have in common is that their body is divided into segments. Many of which, though not all, are protected by an external skeleton, which is used as a shield or a shell. 
Some arthropods' bodies do not grow at the same rate as their exoskeleton, therefore making them shed it for a bigger size, a process known as malting. Arthropods can be either terrestrial or aquatic. The terrestrials, such as this scorpion, breathe through their trachea, whereas the aquatic arthropods breathe through their gills. Arthropods eat everything. Some are herbivores, such as this caterpillar. Others, carnivores, like this praying mantis. And others, omnivores, like the wasps, which eat everything. Most arthropods have internal fertilization and are oviparous, meaning they lay eggs to reproduce. Larvas hatch from these eggs and then go through different stages before becoming an adult. The changes is called metamorphosis. As there are so many different types of arthropods, they are classified into four large groups depending on the amount of legs they have. Insects have six legs, such as an ant, flies or those really annoying nets. The arachnids have eight legs, such as spiders or scorpions. Crustaceans have ten legs, like this shrimp or this shy crab. And their myriapods have more than ten legs and their bodies are elongated, like these caterpillars or these centipedes. Now we're going to remember the most important things. Arthropods are invertebrates and their main characteristics are their jointed legs. Their bodies are divided into segments and they lay eggs to reproduce, meaning they are oviparous. The terrestrial arthropods breathe through their tracheas and the aquatic arthropods through their gills. And they can be either herbivores, carnivores or omnivores. Lastly, and very importantly, you must remember that the arthropods are classified in four groups depending on the amount of legs they have. Insects, six legs. Arachnids, eight legs. Crustaceans, ten legs. And myriapods are those who have more than ten legs and have elongated bodies. Today, we're going to meet animals with eight legs and are a little scary. Today, we're going to meet... Arachnids! Same as insects, arachnids are invertebrates and belong to the arthropods. But don't get confused, arachnids are part of a different animal group than insects. While insects have six legs, arachnids have eight, like you can see in these images. Spiders, scorpions and dust mites are part of the arachnid family and share a number of characteristics that we need to know. They have four pairs of articulated legs, don't have antennae or wings, but do have a pair of clamps by their mouth called chelicera that they use to hold their prey. A fun fact about arachnids is that they can't chew, so they swallow their prey by sucking them in. They suck the soft parts as if with a straw. They're carnivores and spiders and scorpions feed from insects, other arachnids, and sometimes small reptiles and mammals. An arachnid's body is divided in two parts, cephalothorax, consisting of the head and thorax, joined in a single segment, and the abdomen, that can be segmented or not. Arachnids breathe through tracheas or pulmonary sacs, and when they're born, they look the same as they do when they're adults. But of course, they are much smaller. Scorpions are the biggest arachnids. The largest ones can measure up to 20 centimeters. They have huge chelicera in their heads, 
and use them to grab their prey before they inject venom with their sting at the end of their tail. Spiders are the most popular arachnids, but also the scariest. Most of them are venomous, but very few are truly dangerous for human beings. The truth is, spiders are astonishing animals. Also, apart from being able to produce their famous spider web, they are able to hunt their prey in multiple ways. Look, look! Dust mites are the least popular arachnids because they are so small you can't see them at a glance. They are microscopic. But what is true is that they are everywhere. In every house, there are thousands and thousands of dust mites. Well, now we know a little more about arachnids. The truth is they're very strange and mysterious animals. But they're important for the balance of life, for this marvellous life. Goodbye, friends. See you next time and don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning TV! Do you know how long an ant can live? The answer is surprising because it depends on the type of ant it is and the work it does. Male ants live for a few weeks. Worker ants live for two to three years and queen ants can live up to 15 years. That must be because they live like true queens. Can ants swim? Most ants can swim and are known to be very fond of water. In fact, some ants are able to live underwater for two weeks without going above water, without coming up to breathe. How many eggs can a queen ant lay per day? Queen ants are the ones in charge of laying the eggs for the colony to grow. And the truth is, is that it grows very fast because a queen ant can lay between 800 and 1,500 eggs a day. No wonder there are ants everywhere. What do ants eat? Ants are omnivorous animals. They feed on plants and the flesh of other animals, so this means they have to hunt. And the soldier ants are in charge of doing so. Although they are very small, they are very organized and hunt in groups. They are capable of hunting animals much bigger than themselves, such as this worm. Do ants have brains? Yes, and very big ones. In fact, ants are the animals with the largest brains in proportion to their bodies. And they are also super strong, capable of lifting 50 times their own weight. To be equal to an ant, if I weighed 50 kilos, I would have to be able to lift 2,500 kilos. I can't even lift a hundred. It's a good thing they are so small because if they were our size, they would be very scary, don't you think? Goodbye friends, see you in the next Happy Learning video.